the last thing you need are two unrepentant, smug other parents interfering. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the moments when Judge Marilyn Millian gave a deserving litigant a verbal smackdown. She totaled my car as well when she hit it. Good. Number 10, a vicious illegal slumlord. At first, Judge Millian thinks this plaintiff is wrong for suing for rent he already paid. He doesn't technically disagree, as his priority is the security deposit. And I told the defendant that I would be moving out September 1st. Oh, so you stayed there July, August? September. Regardless, the defendant starts digging herself into a hole, and once the judge sees the conditions of the illegal basement apartment, she really changes her tune. Turning her attention to the neglectful defendant, she doesn't mince words. Because you look like a slumlord right now. Like a vicious, illegal slumlord. The landlord's odd calmness as she tries to explain why she's not responsible doesn't earn her any points either. Millian tries to appeal to her compassion, if it exists, and forces her to confront the fact that charging someone rent to live in uninhabitable conditions is morally bankrupt. I need to stop hearing your voice. I can't hear your voice for another second. You are despicable. Number 9. The Wrong Cake Marva Utley's daughter was so distraught that the bakery gave them the wrong flavor of cake for her birthday that she stormed out of her party. So Look, there's 35 people there in her honor and she storms out in a huff because it's red velvet and not rum? The day was apparently ruined and Utley wants the baker to pay for the cost of the cake and the entire shindig. Judge Millian can't help but make light of the situation because it's too ridiculous to take seriously. Because apparently it's a big deal. It ruined the 22 year old party that she stormed out of her own party. She couldn't take the pressure. However, the judge is offended that Utley would sue for a whopping $1,500, especially since her kid is literally a grown woman. Millian instead takes aim at the absent daughter, calling out how spoiled and ungrateful she sounds. I had to pay the DJ. Of course you did. You had a party. I have to pay the For a, apparently incredibly ungrateful 22-year-old. Have- Everyone else who is in touch with reality would agree. Number 8. I'm a man of God. If there's one thing Judge Millian can't stand, it's a litigant hiding behind religion when they've done wrong. Your Honor, I'm a man of God, and I do not. Are you a man of God? Defendant Joseph Bruska is accused of selling a teenager a useless phone. It doesn't take the judge long to decide exactly how guilty he is. Mr. Bruska, how often do you rip off 15-year-old children? But Bruska's contention that he's a man of God really, really gets under her skin. She's not letting him off that easily. I think that you're smack-talking about God because you realize what a jerk you look like right now. In fact, she can't help but let him squirm a little because she's not quite sure any god would be all that thrilled at him dragging his faith into this. Number 7. Warranty Discrepancy They have no warranty under this gentleman's name. They have no warranty under this VIN number. They have no warranty under this date for this car. Like a skilled assassin, Judge Millian lies in wait, setting car dealership manager Reynoso up for a massive smackdown. She lets him explain why the plaintiff's warranty didn't kick in, then drops the bomb that she had already called the company and found out there never was one. And you know what the funny thing is? They don't have a contract for him. So not only did he lie in court, but he also took his customer's money for a warranty that was never purchased. This clears the way for her to eviscerate him and his nonsensical excuses. So who at your dealership thinks that I am an idiot? Give this camera person an Emmy, because the way they slowly push in on Reynoso as the judge rakes him over the coals is truly spectacular. Number 6. Where did you get this hubris? Anthony Gino Martinson sues the parents of a teen for attempting to get a restraining order against him. Although, as the case goes on, it becomes clear they had good reason. What business do you have having a minor go with you instead of her parents? who's 16. Like, what business is this of yours? You're a grown man. Martinson transported their daughter out of town without their consent. There's something more than meets the eye here, and the judge clearly senses it. The plaintiff's inappropriate relationship with the daughter has gotten so bad that the judge becomes furious. How old are you? How old are you? 
21, ma'am. Where did you get this hubris? She blows up at him, saying he must be out of his mind to think what he's doing is okay. Ultimately, she makes it clear that he needs to stay away. Are you out of your mind? You need to stay away from her, okay? Number 5. A Place Reserved in Hell Few disputes between exes are as reprehensible as this. This yes, is the ring yes, that he told you he was buying for his mama? Yes, ma'am. Judge Millian has plenty to say to the gullible plaintiff, who bought a ring for her ex-boyfriend to give to his mother. But it was actually an engagement ring he wanted for his other girlfriend. Defendant Raymond Green Sutherland can't tell a consistent story to save his life and can't own up to his disgusting behavior. That was only my friend. But if it's only your friend, why'd you get engaged to her to get married? Uh, I don't know. What were you doing? Judge Millian has a lot of fun laying out his misdeeds, having him walk her through every single terrible decision and forcing him to explain them. By the end, she sums him up with some choice and honest words. You're a complete user of a nice young lady and there's a place reserved in hell for you. Number four, so much church, so little religion. Plaintiff Quincy and his cousin, defendant Imani, have the good sense not to use their last names on TV. The fight escalated into an all-out assault between them and their acquaintances, which led to car damage. So me, I'm just like enraged, I'm going crazy, like why did you bring these people to my house? Okay, so much church, so little religion. What really floors Judge Millian though, is that the pair are supposedly devoted churchgoers. Quincy is even looking to become a minister. I know you did. Because we all sin. I Come know, on, we all I fall know. short of the glory of the Lord. Okay, so, well, When you rage know? comes, you never know what happens. So. Alrighty so, then. That didn't stop him from egging on his friends to fight his cousin, though. The hypocrisy of the whole thing leaves a bad taste in our mouth, and Judge Millian's assessment is a necessary palate cleanser. Her damning statement, which basically says they need to practice more of what they preach, provides a much-needed reality check. Um, did you? Because you could stay out of danger by staying inside. Yes, but being so Stop clapping. My cousin. Your behavior is deplorable for somebody who wants to be a reverend. Don't clap. Not that either one is able to hear it. Number three, unfit to serve. Here's yet another dispute between cousins. Two of them end up in court over the ownership of a small dog. Defendant Christopher Colgan probably didn't expect his snide, repugnant, and cruel messages to the plaintiff to be read aloud on TV, but she didn't just do it to embarrass him. And then at some point you write, ha 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 ha, you can try Sarah, but you won't win. You make maybe what, 30,000 combined with your boyfriend? We learn he's a Marine who's trying to become a cop. Judge Millian can't believe it. It's so entertaining to watch her verbally destroy him in front of countless people. What kind of Marine are you? Because that's was, really one of the nastiest, most immature very, things I've ever seen was, in my life. But her biggest and most valid complaint is that this is not the kind of man who should be able to hide behind a police badge. Watching him eat his words is satisfying, even if he's legally in the right in the case. And I, I do regret saying those things. I do. Oh, do you? Yes, I think Honor, you regret I that I read it out loud no, on I do national television. I, I, I think even, that's what you regret. When I talked to my grandmother about it, I told her that I did regret saying those things. Number two, you're a horrible person. Sometimes compassion and grace is what separates Judge Millian from other TV judges. In this case, though, she reserves all her understanding for the plaintiff, who became the target of a defamatory and disgusting campaign of internet harassment. Even my mom in the family business was getting emails saying, uh, here is the website uh, exposing him for what he really is. The defendant insists he's not at fault. He's acting like he holds no responsibility and didn't do anything wrong because he was just doing what his client, a lawyer, wanted. Except the judge doesn't buy that. Photoshop, that's the word in the email, uh, Photoshop. To, to edit, but... To, ed to Photoshop the pictures to make it look like he's doing yeah. something sexual to young men. She tells him point blank that he knowingly spread lies for money, and that makes him completely undeserving of her respect. It's a devastating, even-keeled takedown. Nah, you're in control. No, you're not only in control, you're a horrible person because you're taking pictures and making them look like something that you know they're not because you have the real pictures. The camera slowly pushing in on the defendant to capture his shame is just the cherry on top. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Is it just me? 
Two ex-friends left their evidence and their good sense at home. Is it just me? No, it's something no, not. Right? You know. like, like I'm worried about them crossing the street. <laughs> no business owning a dog. The judge takes on the airheaded owner of a vicious dog. And you couldn't keep the two of them straight when Gail sued you? You couldn't keep straight that it was, oh, it's the girl, not the guy? I think you can't possibly keep track of how many times this has happened. Sugar Daddy. Judge Millian knows exactly what happened here. And then, you know, while there's the promise of one day intimacy, and then the minute there's no intimacy, boom, everything gets canceled, all the credit cards get canceled. That's not why they you got canceled. You gambled and you didn't win the gamble. That's not what happened. You're That's right. exactly what happened. Throwing a litigant out. The judge doesn't take kindly to basically being called a homophobe. Must be the sexuality thing. No, it's not. And I resent that. And you know what? Get out of my courtroom. Yes, get out. Yeah. I resent that. Not only because I have family members who would be very offended by what you just said. Get out of here and stop playing victim. It's your purse that doesn't belong there. The audience actually claps when the judge rules against the plaintiff. His tires are in an appropriate place. It's your purse that doesn't belong there. And certainly not, I mean, if you do that, let it not be $4,000 worth of stuff. Verdict for the defendant. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Nothing's going on in your thick head. A massive six-day manhunt for a teen girl led police to defendants Melinda and Christopher McManus's door. Yeah. How is it that you could allow something like this to go on for six days? A manhunt looking for a missing 14-year-old girl. Melinda had been aiding her son in hiding his girlfriend from her parents. Although Christopher says he had no idea, he sure doesn't act like he's sorry it happened. He even gets thrown out near the end. I keep talking and nothing's going in your thick head. That's because you're, you're so busy yeah, trying to be right that you don't understand the position. Get out of my courtroom. Okay. I've had enough with your laughing. Judge Millian spends the case in a state of disbelief that a parent could think that was a good idea and that her husband could be so callous it enrages her. Throughout, she puts them through the ringer for the pain they've caused, the tax dollars wasted in the search, and their negligence and complete lack of accountability. Do you understand the amount of suffering that you poured on these people? Yes, Your Honor. Do you? If ever someone should leave her courtroom with their heads down, it's these two. Do you have a favorite Judge Million Smackdown? Tell us about it in the comments. Can I say so? No. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.